Hey guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video here. Today we're going to be talking about a comparison between high quality and low quality brushless motors. Now the reason why this is important is we want to be able to do this before we get our hands on the brushless motor. Now the ideal situation in order to determine the difference between high and low quality brushless motors would be able to bring those brushless motors in, go ahead, throw them into our application and then run them. We want to be testing for performance, power output, and heat. We want to be able to optimize these three parameters. If you're looking for specifically efficiency, which is what this video is about, you want to make sure that you have the lowest amount of heat for the highest amount of power output, getting the highest speed if you're using speed as a means of measuring performance. This is exactly what I use. Now the one thing that we have to say here is that a lot of people don't have the luxury of going ahead and buying a bunch of different motors, having the time to spend and test each one of these motors, and then once you're done, you have the motor that you've selected as the one you're going to use in your application. However, the other motors that you've tested now sit in a box and don't get used. That's not a very cost effective way for selecting a brushless motor. That's where we're going to dive deeper into the details within this video to understand how we can make a better, more informed decision up front using only what we see in terms of the specification. Before we dive into the video here, I want to make a quick announcement. For those that frequent the RadioControlInfo.com website, you may have noticed that there is a shopping cart somewhere on the right hand side in the middle of the page. Now that is there because we will be introducing an online shop to purchase t-shirts and other similar products. When we do launch the shop officially, we will make a video sometime within the next few weeks. And on that video, we will have a discount code. And that discount code will be active for a short period of time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss the opportunity of catching that discount code in that future video. Now let's get back to what we are talking about and go through some specifications. We are going to compare three brushless motors. We're going to have brushless motor A, brushless motor B, and C. What we're going to be looking at are a bunch of parameters. The first being KV. We're going to keep them relatively equal throughout our comparison. We're going to say they're approximately 2200 KV for all of the brushless motors. Then we're going to look at the resistance of the brushless motor. That's the internal resistance of the windings of the motor. We're going to look at the max current specification that each one of the motor manufacturers provide. We're going to look at the current at idle. So this is the no load current. And then we're also going to look at the weight of the brushless motor. Let's start by revealing our first brushless motor. This is brushless motor A, 2200 KV. It has an internal resistance of 0 0.0073. This is in terms of ohms, the resistance. Then we have a maximum current of 83 amps. Our maximum current is in amps and it is continuous rated power. To me, Peak power is useless. Now we're, we'll talk a little bit more about that very soon here. Our idle current or no load current is sitting at 3.6 amps and the weight of our brushless motor is 370 and that is in grams. Now let's look at brushless motor B. This also has the 2200 kV. It has an internal resistance of 0 0.0066 ohms. We're looking at a maximum current here of 90 amps with a idle current of 2.7 amps and then our weight is at 320 grams. Now for motor C, this one also 2200 kV with a RM value of 0 0.0060 and then our maximum current is 72 amps and then we have an idle current of 2.5 amps with a motor weight of 340 grams. So that is the specifications for all three motors. Now what do we know about these motors? What kind of uh, conclusions can we make out of looking at the specifications? Well, let's first look at our first specification, which is going to be the comparison of our internal resistance. This is probably one of the most important values that I always look at in order to compare the brushless motors, especially when I can assume that they are roughly the same size. Our three motors here are roughly the same size physically. They do have a little bit different weights, but uh, we'll get to that very shortly. 
our resistance for motor A sitting at 0 0.0073 versus our motor B at 66 and C at 60, you could tell that there is a higher resistance in motor A. That value is a little bit higher. Now, winding resistance is the resistance within the motor, and if you are trying to pass current through it, you want to have the lowest amount of resistance. You don't want anything opposing the power that you're trying to push through that motor. So ideally, you're looking for a motor with the lowest amount of internal resistance, especially when the KV and the physical size of the motor is the same. And this is where it is in our case. Here, motor A has the highest resistance. I would expect that this motor would create a lot of heat. This is something that indicates you know, where the heat can come from. Now, if you push 100 amps through this, power is equal to the I, the current square times the resistance of the motor. This is where you're gonna get a significant amount of power going directly to waste heat. That would not be ideal. Let's look at our maximum current. This is what the motor manufacturer is saying that this motor can deliver, 83 amps. Now the critical thing about the maximum current of the motor at 83 amps versus 90 versus the 72, you can see how they're all over the place. You have 183, 191 one at 72. The critical thing is motor manufacturers, if I go and produce my own, I can put down any number I want. In fact, I could do that for any of these numbers. So it makes it very difficult to understand if these numbers are actually accurate or not. However, in the maximum current area, this is where this probably applies the most. It's very easy for someone to go and put different numbers here. Why? Because it depends on so many different things. It depends on the ambient temperature that this motor was running within. It depends on the airflow surrounding the motor. It depends on a bunch of different parameters that you cannot control across all the different motor manufacturers. So you have to take it with a grain of salt when you see that 83 amps uh, continuous rating. It may not actually be 83 amps that you can get out of that motor continuously. And of course, if you go and water cool that motor, maybe you can get that 83 amps continuously. So this is where it depends, again, on all the different environmental sort of effects that can come into play here. We have to take this, like I said, as a grain of salt, 83 amps. It's relatively within the sort of average and mean of those numbers. Uh, let's look at our idle current, 3.6 amps. It represents the highest amount of current for no load on the brushless motor. This suggests to us that if you don't have a load or you have a relatively small load and you're operating that brushless motor, a lot of the power there is going directly to waste heat. Our most effective or efficient motor at no load, so this is not really ideal for us, it's probably not one of the most significant parameters that we can look at, but it does suggest that motor C with a 2.5 amp rating is gonna be a little more effective. It doesn't take as much energy to actually rotate that motor to keep it running. It's gonna take 2.5 amps times the voltage that you're running, and that's the wattage that you put directly into just getting the motor moving. It's not producing any sort of power that you can use mechanically out of that motor. That is where you see motor C winning again. So right now motor C is winning on the resistance, also winning on the idle current there. Now if you look at the weight, this is all in terms of grams, 370 grams versus 320 versus 340 grams. Based on the specifications that we've looked at so far, we are considering motor C to be the most effective. It also pretty well sits within the average playing ground in terms of weight. When we look at the mass or weight of this motor, we're trying to just make sure that the motor is not a much larger in physical size than the others. If it was much larger, we would expect a very good result out of it. But because it is sitting at 340 grams, it's relatively within the playing field of the other motors. Therefore, it is, it is on par, and I don't have a conclusion other than that to draw from this example. Like I said, the motors are all relatively the same diameter and length. There's not much difference. We're talking with Within a few millimeters between each one another. It does show us here that motor C is the best motor in terms of efficiency. It has the potential to be as efficient as we could expect with these numbers. Now this is only provided, like I said, if these motor numbers are accurate. Now one thing I do have to suggest, I have owned motor C personally and I know that the 72 amps maximum continuous current is very conservative. I've been well over 100 amps continuous for throughout the entire run of a brushless boat, you know, with very, very minimal water cooling. So I know that that 72 amps is very conservative. I have been well over the 100 amps, probably somewhere closer to 120 amps continuous using that 
that motor. Uh, so that's something to also consider that some motor manufacturers derate theirs, while a lot of the weaker and lower quality motors, you'll see that the motors are typically overrated. That's what, in, at least in my experience, I've found. That pretty well sums up for this video what we we're trying to cover. Please like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also remember about the discount code that we will be posting sometime when that shop is ready online. It'll be somewhere in the video. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.